Oh, it's, it's the odd bird. We need, we need say no more. If things were going better for me on the cricket field at the end of the 50s, they certainly weren't at home. In fact, my marriage was beginning to break up. Oh, dear. On reflection, I suppose it was inevitable. I met Enid in 1951 at a cocktail party given by her father, who was the mayor of the Scarborough at the time. We married in 1955 and set up a house in West Ayton, outside Scarborough. The first five years or so passed by happily enough. I worked hard at trying to make the marriage a good one. I believed in family life and had been raised to regard marriage as a contract for life. There was nothing I could do about it, being away from home when we travelled to play with the counties. And the six-month tours abroad placed a tremendous strain on our relationship. Cricketers are human. When you're used to a healthy, marital relationship, it's more than flesh and blood can stand to go without sex for six whole months. Steady on, Fred. Ian had never accused me of sleeping with other women on the tours, but she was an intelligent woman and must have known that I had had the, the odd bird. <laughs> yes, Fred, there's his payoff. <laughs> well, my six months, you know, that's yeah. one long time, really. Fairly poignant in light of uh, <laughs> events over the weekend, really, in <laughs> cricket. So there we are, that's Fred. Uh, he's back tomorrow. Mm, good. Uh, we're blasé, is he? Oh, no, sorry, he's, no, he's not back tomorrow. We've got to finish him off. <laughs> anyway, uh, blah, 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 Fred, uh, somebody upset him, and this happened. This man was being so blasé into the bar that I was really furious. <laughs> and I'm afraid I hit him in the mouth and he had to be carried well, off. The only people that featured in that were the mayor of Scarborough, was Enid, and I'm not having him do that to hurt him <laughs> yeah. and his wife, and he's not doing that well, it either. Could, it could have been somebody from the mayor's office who'd annoyed Fred. Mate, hey, let's do it again, then we've got time. <laughs> the bloke in the mayor's office said, you shouldn't be coming here. You know, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the mayor's son-in-law. You shouldn't come. You Use the tradesmen's. Go around the back door. Go. You're not saying that to me. In the bill. The, first, yeah, the worst person you could say that to was Fred Truman. This man was being so blasé into the bargain okay. that I was really furious. And I'm afraid I hit him in the mouth and he had to be carried off. 6.59, Chris Cooper. And... Yes. He understandably got mad at not being able to live a reasonable life with me, even when I was home. The phone would never stop ringing, and people were forever dropping round to see me. Me, not her. Oh, yeah. no. Often she wouldn't be included on the invitation to parties and functions. You could have insisted. At one stage, <laughs> I refused to go anywhere, yeah. unless she was officially included. Well done, Fred. Still Inevitably, <laughs> the row started. <laughs> there are always people around when we needed to be on our own. Yeah. A classic example happened. When I returned home once from Birmingham, I'd broken another record whilst bowling out the West Indies. Oh, Enid came to meet me, yeah. full of affection and happiness for me, yeah. and expecting just the two of us to be there. Yeah. Yeah. When she arrived, she could scarcely get to me for the press and crowds of well wishes. And the old bird. She lost her temper in front of everybody, shouting, One day, you'll come home without your bloody friends all hanging on your back, and left. Well, yeah, you I was upset and disappointed at the time. Yeah. But I can understand now just how fed up she must have felt. Would have taken an angel to enjoy being my wife at that time. I mean, well, there we are. One of these blokes was hanging on his back. He said, get off my back. He said, but I'm a friend. Let, let me, I want to hang, I want to be with you, Fred. Let me, I want to be with a wife. Fred, I want to be with you. And so what? So what if you got problems? I don't care. I want to be with you. And that's the way the conversation went until Fred quite basically had had enough. This man was being so blasé into the bargain that I was really furious. And I'm afraid I hit him in the mouth and he had to be carried off. Here we are. Jeffrey, uh, not Jeffrey Boycott, Jeff, I'm sorry, that's uh, Freddie Truman. <laughs> Jeffrey Boycott's up next. <laughs> yes, oh, well, oh, that's that's a music. abrupt end. Very abrupt end there. Jeffrey Boycott, uh, music. Hooray for Captain Bolding. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Well, he's not the skipper, though, is he? No. Um, what? Problems off the field. What's he willing to put back? I don't know. Problems off the field for Fred, it's fair to say. Oh, as usual. And uh, I hope he's got a good heating system in his motor. <laughs> the rows and scenes got worse and worse oh, until dear. I frequently left the house and spent the night in my car. Really? There was one notable occasion in 1961 when I was playing against the Australians at Headingley. Mm. On the Saturday afternoon, I had six wickets for one run spell in less than an hour to put them all out. The press were calling it the finest piece of pace bowling ever seen in a test. So it's pretty up. I wonder to myself what they would have thought if they had known I'd spent the previous night in the back of my car in a Leeds car park with an overcoat for a blanket. Not good for a Driving at the ground before anyone else. Got the I have a wash and shave. <laughs> for a long time, my address was often the car, the Yorkshire Dales. <laughs> by 1964, I had taken enough. 
I walked out intending that it would be final and stayed in a hotel near Skipton. Mm -hmm. But one day when I went back to the house to see Karen, our daughter, I looked at Enid and knew straight away that she was pregnant. Blimey, what a cliffhanger. Blimey, this is like neighbours. <laughs> it was incredible. Why did he stay in a hotel? He was a famous sportsman. Yeah. Why did he sleep in the car? I don't know. Mean, wasn't he? He could have stayed in the hotel. Could oh. stay in a five pound a night bed So many breakfast. questions unanswered by the tape. <laughs> Maybe we'll never know. Okay. Well, uh, it's been coming all week and it's the end of the line. Here he is. The thing that really cut me in two was parting from my children. I'm wondering what they would think of me when they grew up. I respected my father to the end of his life. And I wanted their respect. The divorce Romaine had went through as quietly as possible for a man as well known as me. No dirty linen was washed in public. No third parties were involved. I went to ground in the Yorkshire Dales to avoid the press and everyone else. We were both reasonable about it. Today, there are no grudges between us. We both know it was just one of those sad things that occur in life. Basically, Ian is a very kind and generous person. I could never fault her as a mother to our children. I hope she will remarry one day because she deserves a better life than she has had. Well, it's safe on the alimony as well, let's be honest. <laughs> From my looking at it, he got spotted. Uh, this is a very old tape, though, of course. Oh, yeah. He got spotted mm. uh, on the Yorkshire Dales, though, by some bloke. He was sleeping in his car, as usual. That's right. Yeah. He says, knocks on the window, Hey, Fred Truman, I want your autograph. He said, no. So what if this, it's all right if you're sleeping in the car. I don't, give us your... And then, hey, Fred... Right. Nobody worse to say that to than Fred Truman. This man was being so blasé into the bargain that I was really furious. And I'm afraid I hit him in the mouth and he had to be carried off. Yes, Fred.